Last episode we explored the island St. Lucia and we could moor the boat in the magnificent bay of Maigo, just in front of the several offices. The resource facilities can be used by marina guests as well, so we could relax a few days at one of the pools and had a wonderful time. After 14 times being ruled by different nations, St. Lucia became independent in 1979 and is since then a sovereign state. We had a look at some nice places such as the capital city, Castries, Cross Islet and Pigeon Island. After this we went down again and had our lunch at Rodney Bay Marina. This is the place where one of the legs of the Atlantic Ways for cruisers ends. In the vicinity of Miku we took a trail in the rainforest and passed a nice little place called La Tille. In Sofia we got an explanation about the Sulphur Springs, the world's only drive-in volcano. In Bamanu we participated in the so-called rainforest adventure. We travelled with an aerial tram to the highest point of the rainforest and after that we zipped our way down using 9 platforms and 8 zip lines. Sailing to Bonaire was due to the situation in Venezuela a bit tricky. Every single harbour is declared as a military zone and we were advised to stay away from the coastline of Venezuela at least a hundred miles. Some people even switched off AIS and put out the navigational lights. We didn't have to make this choice because during the last night a smell came out of the navigation corner and it turned out to be the controller of the navigation lights. So we had to switch it off and install the emergency lights. After one unidentified boat on our course, which stayed a few hours in our line, we diverted our course north. After a few hours we were free to maneuver again, and the boat changed its course ashore. In Bonaire we chose for the harbour village Marina, a bit north from Kalendijk. In the evening we ate at the fancy restaurant Belandra, at the entrance of the marina, to celebrate sailing 10,000 nautical miles together since we met. Bonaire is a relative small island with 288 square kilometers and only 18,000 inhabitants. Its capital is Kralendijk, a nice little town with some shops and restaurants. Some cruise ships have found their way to Bonaire as well, and sometimes there are two of them in the dock. One of the nice things on Bonaire is that there is a Dutch supermarket, Van den Twil. We honestly were a bit surprised that we were so glad that we finally could buy Dutch products and familiar brands. Almost every day we paid this supermarket a visit and gained several kilograms. With a scooter we drove in southern direction and passed the salt lakes. Beautiful colored contrast between the turquoise blue sea and the pink colored salt pans. Bonaire is currently producing 400,000 tons of salt yearly. A bit further south we could see the little slave huts. 
which were used in the time that slavery was common. These little huts were there for them to sleep in and gave them at least some protection. In Sorbonne, from 9 till 13 April, the World Championship Freestyle Windsurfing took place. Unfortunately, we could not see this event because the 9th of April he would travel to Curaçao already. But we had a look how the servers were preparing themselves for this important competition. On the southeastern side of the island, we visited the mangrove center. With two person kayaks, we moved deep inside the mangroves and then snorkeled in the interconnections between the lakes. In these tunnels, some fishes are just waiting for their food to pass by. The clearness of the water was surprisingly very good, so the visibility was great. After kayaking back to the center, we could look back on an amazing experience again. Aletta is a Dutch woman who started up a goat farm after being occupied as a physiotherapist for 8 years. In the recent years she reduced the number of goats from 120 to almost 60 right now. To make people more aware of the goat farm she organized for smaller groups visits which gave people the opportunity to see some of the processes very nearby. We even could try to milk a goat. After a good explanation and a short demonstration how to do this properly, we all managed to milk the goat.
the end we could taste some of the products Aleta is making of the goat milk. It is astonishing how passionate she is working with her goats and it was good to see that people really love what they are doing and living their dream. On our way to the more northern area of Bonaire, we passed Bonaire Land Surfing Adventures. And of course, we would try the simple way of sailing on land. By loosening the cord, you could reduce the speed limit a bit and make your turns. The jibe corner was the most spectacular one and now and then you could feel how the wind was lifting one of the wheels. From the marina up north there is a wonderful road which passes several nice diving and snorkeling spots. All good marked with yellow buoys and safe approaches we witness once more why Bonaire is so beloved by divers. The wall area around Bonaire up to 200 meters and 60 meters of depth is declared as marine park. To make use of this area you have to buy a personal tag for the price of $45 a year. With its tag, you can also enter the national park in the northwestern part of the island for free. Bonaire is the place for diving, so for us this was the opportunity to use our own diving gear which we have on board. Because it is a long time ago that we used our equipment, we decided we dive under supervision. With our instructor Dirk from Good Dive, we did an assessment and refreshment dive on the house reef of the diving school and went through all the procedures again. Even this dive was very much enjoyable and we saw many kinds of fishes eating from the colored coral. The second dive was in the direction of the Salinas at Pink Beach and there again the view was amazing. Perhaps in Egypt the fishes are even more colourful but the reef at Bonaire, even when it's getting darker, is astonishing. To visit the national park in the northwestern part of the island, you need to hire a bigger car. Like stated before, you could enter the park for free, showing our tag and white ticket. In the park, there are two routes: a shorter one of one and a half hour, and a longer one of two and a half hours. We took the longer route and saw only two other cars during our stay in the park. Again, there are some great diving and snorting sites in the park. We stopped at several points of interest, which were explained on the map we got at the entrance.
finally we snorkeled at Wayaka number 2, which is the most beautiful snorkeling site of the park. Although the rental car was not cheap at all, this visit was worth it. We hope you liked this episode and will be so kind to subscribe. To get a more actual footage you can follow us on Instagram too. Thanks for watching.